Hello, good morning. Would you butter a couple of rolls for me there, please? I could try the peanut butter. I got me chewing. My breath stinks. Excuse me? Blind by night, go away from here. Spring daydreaming right now with Keith Goss is very busy today, carrying the load with that Lord Shahadi, who still somehow makes the animation, hanging out there at Morosi. Keith, you have your eye on the LA Angels. They haven't made the playoffs since 2014. Please tell me, without Otani, there's still optimism for the Halos. Yep, I mean, you said it, Adnan. There's no way around it. Losing Otani, obviously the story of the offseason. But Ron Washington comes in and tries to snap that nine-year postseason drought that you alluded to. Let's not forget, they were five games over 500 going into the deadline last year. Felt like they had to make those moves in the last days of Otani's tenure there. From that point forward, however, 17 and 37. That was the worst mark in the American League. Did not work out as planned. But we'll focus on what is still there, starting with the additions they've made at the back end of the bullpen. Take a look at these five names, guys. Robert Stevenson, a 235 ERA last year after being traded from the Pirates to the Rays. Matt Moore comes back to the Angels after finishing last year with the Guardians and Marlins. And those other three names, you see the drop note on the bottom there. Not great numbers last year, but all of them just one year removed from very productive seasons pitching out of the bullpen. Now you take a look at what's still at the back end penciled in as their closer. That's Carlos Estevez. He was an all-star last year, but again, we talked about those last two months for the team. Can't say he didn't have at least a hand in that last season. Still penciled in as the closer, like I said, but they obviously have options with the board we showed before that with all of the additions. Another name to mention, Ben Joyce. We've only seen him a little bit in the big league so far. Ten strikeouts and nine walks, so obviously the control's an issue, but also topped out at 103 miles an hour last year, so he could be a factor in that bullpen as well. Now moving over to the lineup, how about Logan Ohapi, friend of the show, drove all the way from Long Island earlier this offseason to be <laughs> in studio with us, so we like him for that, obviously. Tiny sample, but four home runs when he was injured last year with that torn labrum in April. That was tied for first among catchers at the time with Adley Rutschman and Sean Murphy, so pretty good company there. Missed more than 100 games with that shoulder with that shoulder issue. Take a look at this company in terms of his home run rate last year, guys. The nine players ahead of him have hit on average about 200 homers in the big leagues. Sign up for a catcher that's going to hit a couple hundred homers. You would take that every day of the week if you're the Angels. Now, how about Nolan Shanowell? We talked about him a little bit last week. This kind of reminds me, guys, are you familiar with the Shaq meme from a couple years ago with Christian Wood? I'm sorry I wasn't familiar with your game. Announcers better be familiar with this guy's game or they're going to look pretty silly early in the season. Take a look at his college stats. Now, I know the big leagues isn't college, but these were just ridiculous numbers that he put up last year at Florida Atlantic. What did he do off of that? Only 20-some-odd games in the minors, hit 365 and 505 before he got the call up to the big leagues, 402 and 29 games down the stretch for the Angels. And, oh, by the way, he's going to be hitting in arguably the best spot in baseball this year, penciled in number two in that lineup ahead of Mike Trout. And that's where we'll end, guys. Mike Trout. What more is there to say? We all know how great he is. We're familiar with his career, but it is what it is at this point. First five years, arguably the best start to a career in the history of the game. The three years before the pandemic, still Hall of Fame production, but a little bit banged up. Three years since the pandemic, still Hall of Fame production, but now a lot of banged up, averaging just 79 games per season. So obviously Trout's going to be a big factor for them, but the question with these guys same is what we talked about with the Red Sox earlier. Is there a move to be made, particularly with the pitching? And you think about who's behind the plate every night at the Angels games. The gentleman named Scott Boris, he's got a couple clients that could help this team. Do we see them making another move? And what's the general feel on the 2024 Halos, guys? Well, honestly, it's going to be tough here, Keith. Obviously, losing Otani is rough. But the name that we keep hearing being linked right now, see why, is Blake Snell. Right. Blake Snell goes there, two-time signing award winner. That would beef up what has been notoriously a sore spot, which is their pitching. It would, it would make a, a significant difference. So, okay, if you're, you're losing Otani, you're saying, okay, we lost Otani, but this year we're going to get – Hopefully, a healthy trout all season, and then you bring in a guy like Blake Snell to be the ace. Yeah, it could absolutely make a huge difference. I mean, I'm an optimist. Sean Well, you know, Rendon, you don't know what to expect of out of this year. He's been in the news a lot lately, but if he's out there and he can be healthy, he can still contribute to the team. A Taylor Ward. I mean, Mike Trout's going to be the X Factor. If he's healthy, he can still go out there and be that guy who hits you 40 home runs this season. Maybe he won't steal you to 20, 30 bags anymore, but he can be a huge offensive threat for you, and then you bring in a little bit more pitching. Back into the bullpen could be a little bit better. I think every team wants to start off hot. Let's, let's not get that confused, but the Angels, I think, are going to be more so than any other team, especially in the West. They have to get off to a great start. I'm excited to see what the new coaching staff will bring. Bo Porter, but, uh, Bo Porter Eric Young, yep. Barry Enright on the pitching side, clearly um, Ron Washington. 
how much can a coaching staff really impact the culture of a clubhouse? And this is something that we're going to be paying attention to this season. If you can get those guys playing hard late in the season, when you see numbers struggle, that's because you're out of it. That's because just the energy isn't the same after Otani gets hurt. Guys just don't seem to be as fired up. So going into the season full of optimism, I'm curious to see how they come out the gates. Yeah, we'd love to see Joe Adele kind of fulfill the promise we see from right. Him, right? Number five prospect in baseball at one point has struggled with injuries. Hopefully he'll be the starting right fielder.